We had a tremendous year. We had a year that, quite frankly, if I coached a little bit better in that last fall game, we may have made a little bit more progress. But we got better as a football team. Uh, we, we changed, uh, you might say, the mindset of a group of guys in about six months. Uh, last year's football team started January 5th over in the arena at a, uh, before the sun was coming up. And if you know anything about that style of workout, the, the workout is about conditioning, but the workout is more about not so much the physical aspect of conditioning, but the mental aspect of the conditioning. I will tell you this beyond a shadow of a doubt, the group of kids that we had worked their tails off. They were the best crew that we had ever had as far as doing what they were supposed to do. And they were a group of kids that quite frankly, they, they respected the game and they played the game the way that it was supposed to be played. <coughs> our staff, our staff, I guarantee you, I, I, I could take this staff and put them anywhere in the country, not be included, but they would turn a program around and make a program better just because of their knowledge and because of their work ethic. They're people that truly care about Wofford, they truly have a passion for the game, and they do everything that they can do every day to help us be successful, and us being the Wofford family. Uh, you look at this year's class, uh, to say that uh, there were no boundaries, uh, when you look at, we signed a kid from California, we signed a kid from Minnesota, we signed a kid from Connecticut, we signed kids from Florida, we signed kids from North Carolina, we signed kids from all over because they were the best guys. And that's the thing that we try to do, we find the best guys. Coach Teachy, who is our uh, recruiting guru, uh, does a phenomenal job, just a phenomenal job. When you look at the organization that we have on our recruiting, Jack does it. A tremendous job of dotting the I's, crossing the T's, and making sure that everybody else does their job. I will tell you this right now, recruiting is not fun. It is not fun. When you look at sometimes driving, maybe in a span of two weeks, 5,000 miles, when you look at uh, starting out early one morning and the, the best thing that you've had eaten for 24 hours is beef jerky and a Diet Coke. Recruiting's not fun. It's just not fun. But because it's a necessary part of the program to find the best people that we can find, we attack it just like we would have prepared for a Southern Conference Championship. Everybody does his part. Everybody works his tail off, and everybody must have the ability to go into a home and sell them. Sell them on what Wofford is all about. A lot of times, you know, it's co coaches are going out there and, and they're giving guys uh, pie in the sky, you might want to say. Uh, basically, all we do is give what we're all about. We give what's real. And what's real is this is a fantastic college that affords an opportunity to change lives and football is just a piece of the puzzle. It's a piece of the puzzle and, and it's an exciting piece of the puzzle, but we feel that it is just part of why. The thing that we have found out over the years is kind of interesting Three as an assistant, this is starting my 24th year as head coach for over a quarter of a century. The only thing that has changed in my affiliation with Wofford, as far as players go, it's the names. The essence of the man must be there. Because if, he, if it is not there, he won't survive here. And the great thing about our staff, so many of the guys went through the program, so many of the guys understand about Wofford, and they understand what it's going to take, 
both on the field and off the field, and they understand the trials and the tribulations that occur with a young man, 18 years old, coming in, first time away from home, and all of a sudden he's got all this stuff that's thrown at him. And that being said, sometimes it gets difficult, but most of the time the guys that we've recruited, what they do, they just bow their neck, they suck it up, they're great kids who are becoming great men, and they turn into an individual that becomes a leader. I've been very, very blessed. Very blessed to be here at Wofford so long. I can remember the day when that was nothing but old run-down housing. I can remember the day that if I stood right here, I may get run over because this was a road. I remember the day with Snyder Field as the stadium. I can remember the day when the coaches would come out of the press box on a windy night and they would say, oh my God, that thing was shaking so bad, I didn't know if it was going to stay up there. <laughs> now, now, when you look, almost a quarter of a century later, we have facilities second to none. The college has done nothing but, but grow from that tremendous regional college to the national prominence that it has today. And it's, we've been able to coincide with the academics because we're recruiting top academic kids as well as top athletic kids. Uh, I'll start the program off. Uh, the first coach I'll introduce will be Aaron Johnson. Coach Johnson, would you come up? Um, this was a great class, and thank everybody for coming out. And selfishly, it was a great class because we added three new running backs to this year's team with the signing of uh, the 2011 class. The first guy that I would like to introduce is uh, Jonathan Martin, goes by Johnny. Johnny is a 5'10", 180-pound running back from Cathedral Catholic High School out of San Diego, California. Um, we had a guy that graduated a few years back, an all-conference offensive tackle, uh, Ben Quick, who was also from Cathedral Catholic. Uh, Johnny, in two years, rushed for over 3,600 yards, which is about two miles. So he ran the football for about two miles and 45 touchdowns in his two years as a starter. He, uh, in four years, he won the league, his conference, all four years, won a state championship as a sophomore. He's uh, second team All-State as a senior, two-time All-County, and as mentioned before, 45 touchdowns. He's used to getting in the end zone. We're real excited about having Johnny on our, on our team and joining our family. The, uh, the next kid I would like to introduce is Octavius Harden. Octavius is also a running back out of Newton Conover High School out of Newton, North Carolina. Uh, Newt, or Octavius is about 5'9", 165. Uh, he also rushed for over 3,000 yards in his last two years as a high school player, right at 3,200 yards. He's a two-year starter and had 44 touchdowns. So when you do the math with him and Johnny, that's right at 90 times of guys getting in the end zone. So we got guys coming in that are used to scoring. Uh, he was also all-conference and all-state as a senior. He participated in the Shrine Bowl of the Carolinas. And both of these guys, Johnny and Octavius, are very strong academically. Um, Octavius holds a 4.6 GPA um, and has never made a B in high school. So he's, his academic standards are very high, as well as Johnny. Johnny comes from a private school, uh, very strong test score, very bright young men. Um, Johnny is going to be a guy that is very versatile, a little bigger, uh, can do some things at different positions. Octavius is a guy that comes in knowing the system. He's been to camp for, I think, the last two or three years over the summer. He knows what we do offensively, and we're excited to have these two young men come in. And the third back that coming in, I'll let Coach, Coach Ayers introduce Coach Lang to talk to you about him. We didn't sign a quarterback in this class, and I want to thank Coach Johnson for letting me steal a little of his thunder and introduce one of the running backs. Uh, we've got six quarterbacks coming back for them, scholarship, two walk-on guys. Mitch Allen has got one year, the rest of them have about a million years left, so we may not recruit one in next year's class. Uh, the other running back, Cam Flowers, is from Early County down in southwest Georgia. Stat-wise, he's a lot like what Coach Johnson talked about these other guys. 
and you hear all the stats and you see the stats and what we always try to do or what I've started with Coach Johnson and Coach Nash and the offensive guys, when we look at somebody on film, it's who they remind us of. But like Coach said, the numbers change, the names change, but the guys stay the same. And is Jeremy still back there? Wait, Jeremy. You guys remember Jeremy Marshall back there. I hate to say this, but this guy reminds us a lot of Jeremy Marshall. He's not real big. He's tough as the world. He's a really good and sleek football player, but he doesn't have Jeremy's bad knees, and he's fast. So that's what we expect to get out of him. Yeah, you know, hopefully he's one of those guys that George Southern's had over years that's really fast, really tough, and does a lot of good things. Uh, the first young man I'm going to talk about tonight is Ben Rader. Uh, ben is from the Cincinnati area. He goes, uh, went to Sycamore High School, which uh, if you're a real close fan, you'll know that that's the same high school that Mitch Allen went to, our quarterback. A uh, real quick story about that. Mitch and Ben's older sister went to school together and uh, actually thanks to Ben's mom, we have our quarterback because uh, Mitch cut his hand pretty bad at their house one time and she stitched him up right there. And uh, so thanks to her. Um, but uh, Ben's a, a guy that I'm really excited about. He's an uh, offensive tackle. He's a big frame guy, as you can see, 6'6", 270. Uh, you guys, if you remember Derek Wooten, uh, Ben's a lot like him size-wise, uh, except he's about 20 pounds, <clears throat> 20 pounds heavier coming out of high school than Derek was. So I'm really excited about him. You can see him. Uh, he's playing right tackle, uh, does some really athletic things for a guy his size, and uh, really excited to have Ben. He was a two-year starter at Sycamore, team captain. Uh, he was second team all GMC, which that conference up there in Cincinnati, uh, probably the guys ahead of him on that list are going to the Big Ten and the Big East and uh, guys like that. So that's a really strong conference for a lot of c competition. Uh, Three-year letterman and track and field as well. Uh, the thing that probably most impressed me with Ben in the spring when I went up there to see him, uh, so I watched him throw the discus and uh, spinning uh, in the discus, throwing that thing uh, well over uh, 150 feet um, was very impressive for a guy his size. So really excited to have Ben and uh, looking forward to working with him. <clears throat> the next young man is uh, TJ Chamberlain. TJ is from Landa Lakes, Florida, uh, Landa Lakes High School, which is just north of Tampa. And uh, TJ played tackle as a senior. Um, played center as a junior. He's a guy uh, who's extremely athletic. Um, he's a physical player. Uh, he's got, uh, got a mean streak. And uh, you can see on some of this film, if you watch closely, he's a guy that finishes blocks and uh, very excited about him. He's the uh, right tackle as well, number 58. So um, he was all conference, all district, first team, all North Sun Coast. Uh, he's a wrestler. Uh, which is also a good attribute, and uh, he's got some good genes. His, uh, his dad's a big fella, and he was a uh, captain of the Indiana University wrestling team uh, a few years ago. Sister uh, swam at uh, Florida Gulf Coast University as well, so there's uh, some athleticism in the genes. And really looking forward to uh, getting TJ here. And uh, we've got two more guys that Coach K is going to talk about, but uh, these four guys we're really excited about on the offensive line. And I think uh, they'll, they'll do a great job for us over the next four or five years. Uh, the next guy that we're going to talk about is Mike Nicholas. Mike is uh, the one that, we, that Coach Ayers talked about being from Connecticut. He is from uh, Staples High School. Um, Mike uh, is a guy that's very tough, very athletic. Um, through his high school career, he was all-conference, all Norwalk Hour, which is the local newspaper up there, and then also all-state. Um, the, the little story about Mike is uh, the, the more we got to know him as, through the recruiting process, uh, we found out that he actually uh, played, his, his dad actually played college football with um, Brian Cass's father as well. So, and then uh, Chip Kelly, the, the current head coach of Oregon, was on that same team. So, just a little fact. Um, we think he's going to be a great asset to us. He's probably going to play either center or tackle. Uh, Coach Nash and I guess we'll have to figure that out as when he gets here. So uh, the next young man uh, is Brandon Krishnowski. We have a little uh, something in common there. 
Um, <laughs> not only the name, but we also have big heads. Um, he was, uh, he was, he's a great kid. Uh, he's been up to every one of our games. He's from Weddington High School in Charlotte. Um, he came up for, for, his, uh, for the senior camp and uh, had a really good camp, and we liked him, and he was basically offered right out of camp. So um, we, we hope that, uh, you know, as the days go on, he, he ends up playing like one of our current guards, uh, Nate Page. We, we recruited a, uh, you know, one inside linebacker. We've got, uh, we've got a lot of inside linebackers coming back this season. And, uh, you know, we went out and, and, and thought we could be really, um, you know, careful with, with who we took. We could take our time and, and, and take a look at, uh, at an awful lot of people. But during, during the spring, we, we came across a film and uh, the guy was just all over the place. Uh, his, junior, his junior film was outstanding. And uh, come to find out, he's, he was a good sized kid and, and, and he was coming to our summer camp. Uh, and, you know, when he came here in the summer, you know, we had an offensive camp and, and he was playing halfback. And uh, man, he was doing good stuff. I mean, he was just always playing hard. And, and you look over there at his frame and he's, and he's 6'2", 6'3", you know, about 235 pounds. And, and uh, you know, this had great feet, the ability to, to uh, not only run fast, but stop and then accelerate again quickly. And that's what, uh, that's what you're looking for defensively. Uh, Kevin Thomas, is, is, is the guy that's coming in to play for us at, at inside linebacker. And uh, yeah, he's a guy that, that went both ways this year on, in, in high school. He's a guy that, that on offense, I mean, he had a, a, over 600 yards rushing, had over 100 yards receiving coming out of the backfield, scored 12 touchdowns. And uh, you know, that's, that's pretty good stuff. Um, but defensively, if you look at it, I mean, his, his, his stats were outstanding. Uh, what he did, he had over 121 tackles, 29 of them were for a loss. He had seven, seven times he forced fumbles, he had four interceptions from his linebacker spot, and he recovered four fumbles. And those are, you know, that's, that's pretty good. Um, but I think more than anything is, is if you go back and look, he was a four-year starter. So he's done, he's done really well over the course of his, his career there. Three years out of those four, he was all conference and all area. And then uh, this past season, he was the MVP in the conference in the area. And uh, he's a guy that I think will, will, will play a lot of football for us and make us a better defense. We only lost one guy outside linebacker, uh, Keaton Thompson. So we also got to be kind of picky. Uh, Tyrese Little uh, came to us late in the process. Um, I guess I came back after Christmas break and uh, Coach Tichy had gotten his film. Uh, he's from Coach Tichy's neck of the woods where he grew up, Aiden Grifton. The head coach happened to be in Coach uh, Tichy's wedding as well. Uh, but I think he's gonna be an outstanding player for us, really athletic, plays with a lot of passion and he got a lot of upside to him. Uh, he's 6'1", 215. Uh, he started three seasons at linebacker, uh, had 126 tackles, 24 for a loss, uh, had four forced fumbles, one for a touchdown. Uh, also academically, he's a 4.0 student, top 10% of his class, and uh, just nothing but great things. Look forward to, to being able to coach him. I have the honor of, of presenting to you all uh, the defensive backs uh, of our 2011 signing class. Um, I think a reoccurring thing that you guys will notice as we go through the film is that all these guys have great size. Uh, not only that, they're, they're very physical. Uh, they play the game uh, as it was intended to play. They, they get after it, uh, play with a lot of fire, a lot of intensity. And uh, the first one to, to uh, provide that example is Breon Anderson. Uh, he actually goes by Breon. His name's Jill Breon. But uh, Breon's from Bartram Trail High School. It's in uh, Jacksonville, uh, Florida. He actually lives in St. Augustine. He's a defensive back who started for three years at his high school. He played both corner and safety, uh, but we're gonna, we're gonna put him in the boundary. He's gonna be a big physical corner for us. And uh, very intelligent kid, very sharp. Uh, we think he's gonna come in and, and do wonders. The next young man is uh, Zach Cole. 
Zach Cole is a uh, safety prospect for us. He's 6'2", uh, about 195 pounds from Morganton, North Carolina. It's just right up the road. Uh, Zach is, is a very special young man. He's, he's uh, sharp both on and off the field. Uh, after talking to his coach, uh, you know, they had some coaching changes over the years, uh, over his career there at Patton High School, and, and he felt that Zach was probably the smartest player uh, on the field, both offensively and defensively. So we think we're getting a good one there. Um, he can flat out play over his career. He had eight interceptions. Uh, he was an all-conference player, all Burke County player, and he was also a North Carolina Shrine Bowl uh, participant, Zach Cole. Next, we have uh, Philemon Permis. Uh, when Philemon arrives on campus, uh, he won't say peep. He doesn't, he's not a man of many words, but uh, as you see on his film, uh, he gets after it pretty good. Uh, again, very physical, uh, a, big, a big safety at, at 6'1", uh, about 185 pounds now. And uh, he's uh, who I call the silent assassin. I told him on his visit, I was, I was thinking of a nickname for him, so that one's going to stick as soon as he gets here. Uh, but he's a very sharp kid as well, uh, very smart, comes from a good family. Uh, his dad's a minister, and uh, I think he's going to be a really good player for us as well. Last but certainly not least, uh, this young man, Caleb Lucas. Uh, Caleb is actually a 2009 graduate, uh, and he uh, went to the Naval Academy and, and decided to, uh, to uh, make the trip down to Spartanburg. He's transferring. Uh, to join us uh, this year. Uh, we think that we, we got something special in, in Caleb. He's uh, a defensive back. We're not quite sure yet what we're going to play him at safety or corner. Uh, he's a guy that, that'll run and hit you. Uh, and he's also a guy that can, that can cover you down the field as well. So uh, these are some of his highlights. His, his uh, junior and senior year in high school. He played both ways in high school. Highly recruited. Uh, found his way to the Naval Academy. And, and uh, we're definitely blessed to have him joining our staff, uh, excuse me, our team. Uh, I mentioned before about the reoccurring theme, these guys being big and physical. But the, the best thing about all four of these guys, uh, I think, is, is uh, these guys can play what we call cat coverage. Now, the coaches won't know what I'm talking about. Any, any ball coaches in here know what cat coverage is? Coach Harris probably knows. <laughs> uh, well, cat coverage is, OK? You, get, you take four defensive backs, you throw them out there to cover receivers. One of the receivers, maybe Caleb, maybe Zach, one of the defensive backs will say, all right, now, you take that cat, I'm going to take this cat, you get that cat, <laughs> you take that cat, and we're good. So very smart players. They'll get us lined up, and uh, they'll fly around and make some plays. So we're happy to have them. The, the first guy that I'll talk to you about uh, is Will Irwin. Will's a wide receiver from Landon Lakes, Florida. Uh, T.J. Chamberlain and he are, are, were teammates down there. Um, Will is about 6'1 and a half, uh, 185 pounds. Uh, Will's kind of your, you know, kind of looks like your stereotypical type Florida guy. You know, he, he goes to the beach a lot. He's been on the surfboard before a good bit, I think. Uh, you know, got the blind locks, all that kind of stuff. But, but Will's a real serious guy. And uh, when we had him up on the visit, I had a, a chance to spend a good bit of time with him. And he's definitely a competitor, and he's definitely uh, a guy that's got a lot of talent. Um, and, and we think that he'll be able to do some really nice things for us stretching the field vertically. Uh, he's also extremely uh, physical, and uh, I think uh, he's got a lot of promise for us. Um, but uh, during his high school time, uh, Will had 89 catches in three years starting down at Land Lakes. He had 89 catches, over 1,800 yards, and 29 touchdowns. Um, he scored 29 touchdowns in 32 games down there for Land Lakes. Uh, he has their record for uh, most touchdowns in a game. Uh, he averaged during his career over 20 yards a pop every time he caught a pass. Uh, and he also scored about one every three times he caught a pass. Um, so a very explosive guy, and we're definitely looking forward to having him. Uh, the next young man is Michael Comer. Uh, Michael uh, is from Newton Conover High School uh, up in the Hickory area of North Carolina. Uh, he was an offensive lineman and long snapper and short snapper at Newton Conover. He's going to play uh, snapper for us, long snapper and short snapper. Uh, comes from a very successful high school program. As Coach Johnson mentioned earlier, those guys, they come to our camp every year. Uh, and and uh, he's been up here several times to camp. Um, 
He's 6'2", 285. He's a really good lineman. Uh, he's a three-year starter at offensive line uh, down there at Newton Conover. Uh, just a few more things on him. Uh, he was an all-conference and all-grader Hickory uh, selection this past year. Started 51 of 54 games. Uh, but the thing that, that we like the most about him as a snapper when you turn the film on is, number one, being a bigger guy, a strong guy. He, can, he puts it back there with a lot of zip. And then he's very consistent as far as you know, the targets that he's aiming and, and, and where he's hitting. Um, and we feel like he's got a chance to come in and make a dramatic impact for us uh, this next fall. So we're excited to have both those guys join us. Thank you. First of all, I want to say uh, how much work, not myself, but the staff has done a tremendous, tremendous job uh, this year. And they do a great job every year. And we're getting better and better. This is, we feel like, another tremendous class we brought in of number one, great people, great people of character. Number two, great students, kids are going to make an impact on campus and uh, have a chance to impact other people when they graduate. Number three, obviously, kids we feel like are going to help us win a lot of ball games. But the, the guys put in hours and hours and hours on the phone, writing letters, emails, thousands upon thousands of miles in the car. Uh, and uh, we start with 8,000 names. And we start next week, by the way, guys, on the next group. So. <laughs> That's something probably don't want to hear yet, but uh, we start with 8,000 names to get it down to these 19 kids. So it is a long, long process, but they do a tremendous, tremendous job for us in uh, representing Wofford and bringing in the right types of kids we want to have here. I'm excited to introduce the four defensive linemen we brought in. Uh, the first guy I want to tell you about is Darius Burton. Darius is a defensive end for us. Uh, he's going to be an edge rusher. He's 6'3", 225. He is from Riverside High School in Durham, North Carolina. Darius has a huge, huge upside. He is a you know, long kid, long arms, a kid that we feel like two years from now is probably going to be 250 to 60 pounds. He led his teams in sacks. He had uh, 10 sacks. He had 15 tackles for a loss. And one thing I really liked we, as a staff, like he had 90 tackles from a defensive line spot. That's not easy to do, especially on the edge. And kid was a very active, active in high school. His father played at Clemson from 82 to 85. So he obviously he has the, the bloodlines and tremendous student, tremendous character. And we're very excited to have Darius coming in. The next young man is Marcus Isom. And Marcus is a six foot, 270 pound interior defensive lineman. He'll be a nose tackle force. Marcus uh, is from Winter Garden, Florida, uh, from West Orange High School. One thing that we really liked on his film is his athleticism. For a big kid who's very athletic and had a high, high motor, went nonstop all the time. Marcus is a tremendous kid. I can't say enough about his character and one of the things that really helped us in the recruiting process of Marcus is a former player, Geno Thompson, is a math teacher and coach down there and had nothing but great things to say about him. And we're excited about him because he's going to have opportunity, we feel like, hopefully to play next year for us. Next, I'd like to introduce to you EJ Speller. Big EJ. EJ is 6'2", 285 pounds on a good day. A couple biscuits, he's probably 315, 320. <laughs> EJ is from Chesapeake, Virginia, from uh, Deep Creek High School. EJ played every snap. He started at center on offense, started at nose guard on defense, and he is a very big, very athletic, very physical kid, again, with a high motor. And that's not easy to do when you're that big and you're playing every snap. He actually played some special teams, too, so there was not many times where he was off the field. Uh, he uh, was all conference, uh, all tidewater, which is a great area for football. So the competition level is very high. Again, excited to have EJ aboard. And the last young man I'd like to introduce to you is Zach Muller. Uh, Zach is a kid that kind of got on late in the process uh, in uh, early January, sent some film in. Uh, Zach is 6'2", 240-pound defensive end from Wazetta High School in Plymouth, Minnesota. Uh, one thing, again, he stood out was his athleticism, his toughness, and his program. The, the school he goes to has won three state championships in the last five years. They currently have six men playing in the NFL from this high school. So it's a tremendous program. He's used to winning, used to working, has a huge upside. Again, big physical athletic kid. He was all conference, a three-year starter. 
uh, and uh, again won the state championship this year and played both ways in the state championship game. He led his team in sacks and only played about 70 snaps of defense. He was a starting tight end that had to get moved to defensive end due to some injuries halfway through the year. So we feel like this kid's got a tremendous chance to help us out pretty early. And that concludes all the 2011 signing class.